Welcome into another edition of the Trial Technology Litigation Support Podcast. I am Rob Helt. I'm your host, and let me up front apologize. We have not dropped a podcast in almost a month. And, you know, let me apologize, but let me say that uh, this is something that I do uh, without any schedule, per se, and without any paid sponsors or paid advertisers. So, therefore, I have no one. Uh, to answer to when I do this. So uh, it is a volunteer thing. There are times that things will press me that I just cannot get a show up. And that ha- it has been that way for almost a month. We have had things going on in San Francisco, Sacramento, New York, and Canada. So it's been very uh, hard to get one done and, and get something edited and up. Uh, the other thing that came about is the trial technology seminar that we had on February 18th and 19th here in Dallas that was last week, last Thursday and Friday, uh, I've got to tell you, uh, it went off very, very well. It was the beta test to see if this is something we wanted to continue to do. It was myself, Ted Brooks, Jason Barnes. We put together the hands-on learning at the trial technology seminar and training workshop. We had several guests who came to Uh, My office is here in Dallas, where we did it, and we really were unscripted. Uh, We we went in with an agenda that was very loose. We went off on tangents about everything, and it was incredibly fun to do. I had a great time. I hope uh, that the guests had a great time. We've gotten some really good feedback. There's been some great feedback on LinkedIn. We've gotten private emails, and so... It was certainly our way of trying to give back to the industry. We had the cost of this thing as such, basically to cover the costs of what we were doing. Uh, It was not a profitable venture by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, It wasn't like we had a stage and 75 people in the crowd and things like that. It was very grassroots, and that's exactly what we intended. One of the things that I took away from the seminar that just impressed me more than anything. I'll give you a quick story before I bring on our guest today. One of the things that happened was we were using Trial Director throughout the the training session talking about different things that we did and how you manage data sets and how you manage this and manage that. And at a break on the last day on Friday, uh, one of the participants came up and said, hey, you know, you had on cue on the poster, who's who's going to show on cue? And originally that was set up that we were going to use Jason Barnes to do that. And Jason had got off into graphics and was really heavily focused there and didn't have a trial laptop with him. And so I said, well, I'll do it. And I needed to reinstall the latest version of OnQ on my machine. And so I sent an email to Eric Pubins and I said, Hey, Eric, uh, I'm going to demo OnQ for a couple of hours after the lunch break. And uh, I need to get the latest install. So if there's any bug fixes or anything like that, I need those. And is there anything you need me to talk about? And he replied and said, Here's the link and here's where you get it. And let me know when you're done with the seminar. Let me know how it went. And maybe I can pop by and say hello. And I said, well, are you in town? He said, well, yeah. I said, well, you're in Dallas? He said, yeah. I said, well, hell, why don't you come over and teach it? He said, Rob, I'm wearing shorts and a T-shirt. I said, that doesn't matter. Come on. And so lo and behold, right after lunch, uh, standing at the doorway of our conference center was uh, Eric Pubitz. And he came in for about an hour and a half and talked about on cue and who better to talk about it than uh, the people to do it it would be like trial director being taught by Derek Miller so uh, it was good and I was very impressed very happy with the attendees who came it was all in all a wonderful wonderful session we are going to do it again in the future we hope to make this a regular thing and we'd like it to be kind of a trial technology litigation support institute so to speak because something like this has never been done and it was wonderful which my guest today uh, was at the seminar she came and we did not know each other although our we were 
kind of in a same geographical location for a little while. Uh, she is the co-owner of uh, Power Presentations in Louisville, Kentucky, a city you do not hear much about. And, you know, when you come from Kentucky, it's kind of like me. Uh, a lot of times people would ask, well, where are you based? And when I was in Arkansas, it's like Fort Smith, Arkansas. What, what the hell's going on there? That's not Boston or L.A. or Chicago or San Francisco. And Louisville is kind of the same way. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of tucked off there. They have everything that every other big city has, uh, but they still have that kind of small town atmosphere. And not only that, she's female. And I wanted to talk about something on the podcast today about what it's like to be a woman in this industry. Certainly not being sexist at all. I just want to know from that standpoint, because if you look at the reality of it, uh, there are differences, and uh, we'll definitely get in that on the show. So today, I want to bring on my guest coming in from Louisville, Kentucky, Katie Coulter. Katie, welcome to the show. Hi there. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for having me. I'm super honored to have been asked to, to be on your podcast today. Well, you know, I, I don't know if uh, maybe you're not going to have any friends left after you do this, because normally when somebody <laughs> does a podcast with me, they have to go and defend themselves and uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen. But Katie, tell me a little bit about your company and how you got your start. I know uh, a little bit of your background, but uh, one of the things that we talked about during the seminar, if you remember, was we said that uh, we were talking about pressing the space bar back in the old days of sinking depositions and sanction. We were talking about pressing the space bar, and your, your little head started shaking, and you were like, yeah, I'm back in high school. That's what you used to do. So Tell us a little bit about your company and how you got your start. Great. Yeah. Um, you know, my parents are court reporters, and they have been for over 35 years. Um, this company, Power Presentation, started in the late 90s. Um, my dad, who is my co-owner with me, uh, he started as a response to attorneys just being super interested in the new technology that was out there, and uh, luckily... Uh, just having been in this family business and been around the industry as long as I have, I was able to tinker and play with the software at a very young age, learning to convert video and encode and all those old terms that we don't use anymore. <laughs> but um, it, it, it was um, to me how this field has grown and having observed it. And, and we've just been very fortunate that this has been uh, a field that's this taken off in our area and that attorneys and judges and juries seem to appreciate our efforts. What do you think is the single hardest thing for you in this industry being in a smaller city? Uh, I kind of cl call them a closet city, so to speak, and really being one of the only games in town, so to speak, in an area like Louisville. What how, is that a challenge a lot of times? Uh, I think that it can be um, a challenge in that we develop um, relationships with firms that, and it's and it's such a small, you know, the legal community is very small. And um, unfortunately, there are instances where I, I'd love to work for both sides, but that's not something we're comfortable with. And, uh, you know, the hope is, that at least for me after coming back from this seminar is that I can continue to give back and hopefully uh, develop this as a career path for others in this city. And, you know, I, I learn the most when I'm with competition. Uh, that's when we grow the most. And I, I hate going to a trial without a tech on the other side. Um, it, it just, it slows things down and um, unless the other side has, you know, a dedicated paralegal that, you know, is only their trial tech uh, or operating in that capacity, uh, there are instances where I am alone a lot. And um, I think that can be a real disadvantage overall. I, I think it's better for the industry to have two at a trial. Well, you talked a little bit uh, right there. You mentioned the seminar. You you came to Dallas. You you wrote something that uh, I saw on Tumblr or wherever it was, and, and you wrote a, a, a glowing uh, recommendation of, of us and how you and I'm certainly humbled by it, and thank you so much for doing that. But what did you take away from the two days that you had in Dallas? I think that 
there are so much. I mean, not just the topics that were covered, but the layout was excellent because it gave me a chance to really connect and interact, not just with the speakers, but also the attendees um, in, an, in a meaningful way. Um, you know, you all were very transparent with us. You were willing to share with us. Um, you were very motivational. And I think that's one of the things that you have to invest in is meeting with other people that do what you do, that have a passion for it and seeing the big picture. You know, we get so lost in the minutia and, you know, diving into our trials that sometimes we forget, uh, this is a really cool field. It's an exciting field, you know, and um, it, it's neat to be with other people that do what you do. One of the things that I saw that I felt like I took away from it, and uh, I was telling my wife um, about this, was, you know, we, we, we had the seminar here, and then, of course, at, in the evening, we would walk over to the West End, and uh, there's a big open lounge area, and we would all sit with a cocktail, kind of when you can, uh, you know, take the tie off and take the coat off and roll the sleeves up and sit and talk, and, and it's kind of an informal atmosphere. One of the things that I've always noticed, whether it was ABA Tech Show Chicago, Legal Tech New York, ILTA, uh, NCRA, any of those conferences – is that what you wind up having are what I termed in high school as being click groups of little pods of people that they really don't associate back and forth with others. They're, and, and you see a little bit of view of someone else as a competitor and whatnot. The one thing I took away from this was we didn't have any of that. Uh, right. every, everybody... To me, we were in, we really weren't even in a conference room. We were in a big war room, and it seemed like you know everybody had their computers out and uh, everybody was participating, and no one felt threatened by anyone else in the room. Did you did you get that feeling? Like it wasn't it wasn't a feeling of who's watching me and who's worried about whether I'm here and let me see who else is here, and it just didn't have that feel to it. Yeah, I agree with you, and I think that, um, and you probably, you know, don't realize this, but um, you all set the tone for us, and uh, that said a lot as far as uh, us being able to feel comfortable and to realize that we are in the same boat. You know, that it was um, the atmosphere was really authentic. Uh, I will say that I enjoyed every single person that was there. I hope to stay in touch with everyone. Um, just feel really fortunate that we had such a good group. Well, I, you know, hopefully, hopefully it worked out. And I know the next one, the one thing that we want to do is we always want it to be that way. We want it to be a, a learning environment that people don't feel threatened. Everybody feels welcome. Uh, for Ted and I, uh, I, you know, I can't speak for Jason or uh, anybody else, but or Sue Ann or anybody or Rick or anybody, but what, but the one thing for Ted and I, I will speak for him, is that we wanted to be genuine and we wanted to be very approachable. We didn't want people to think, oh, well, that's Rob Hilton, Ted Brooks, and they're up on the platform and they're the all-knowing, all-being. We learned things from you guys, and that's the way we wanted the seminar to go. We wanted it to be a we're not holier than thou type of thing. We wanted you to be able to approach us and us approach you and – and have it where, hey, we're all on the same team in the grand scheme of things here. And I think we accomplished that. Let me ask you, uh, I want to move directions. Um, yeah. You are, uh, doesn't matter what your age is, but you're relatively young. Uh, you have a zest and a zeal for this business that is absolutely infectious. Oh, well, thank uh, you. I've had the opportunity, and I see where you get it, having had the opportunity to uh, spend some time talking with your dad. Uh, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for uh, in his industry, uh, in the court reporting field. He's been in it for a long time and understands that game inside and out, but also can recognize the technology that's available. What's it like, Katie, to be A, a little bit on the younger side, uh, and B, to be female in, the, in a mostly male-predominant industry? Yeah, uh, it is interesting. You know, um Immediately what comes to mind, actually there are two different trials that come to mind um, where I 
overheard jury members comment and say, you know, how nice it is to see a girl doing that job or, <laughs> you know, that it was a sign of how far we've come that, that a woman is doing that job. And um, while I think there are instances as a woman in any career where there might be that increased pressure to prove yourself, uh, ultimately I think that being, let's say, a minority in this field actually serves to be a strength. And I know that there's a unique perspective I bring to the table um, that I can attribute to my specific, you know, life experiences. And my hope is that my contribution to this field is the assurance that women can and will succeed. And what may initially seem like a limitation is often your greatest attribute, you know. Well, I, I, I will say, you know, my partner for 10 years was a woman. And uh, she is someone that... Uh, uh, regardless of our personal differences, um, I would put her in a hot seat in any trial in America because I know her work ethic and I know how good she is. Uh, my current two partners are both female, Sue Ann Engel and Nancy Geenan, and, and they, they're both female. Nancy's a lawyer, and Sue Ann uh, is a graphic artist and uh, was with FTI and, and uh, Trial Graphics, and you know now she has this company. So I certainly see no gender bias. Uh, I have no gender bias. Uh, I think a lot of times there are some women who are better uh, in this field than 90% of the men that I've met because of the emotional factor. Uh, they're able to be a little sometimes more partic particular about things and sometimes more meticulous. Do you ever feel, though, uh, any kind of, I'm not going to call it discrimination, but do you ever feel like you're in the midst of, whether it be at trial or wherever, Katie, do you ever feel like maybe you're in the midst of a boys club and sometimes that tends to make things a little hostile, if not outwardly, certainly inwardly for you? Um, there, there are trials definitely where, you know, you're surrounded by the majority, you know, majority men. But um, I will say that, uh, after you've proven yourself and you show that you can be trusted, just like in any field, I guess, uh, our less aggressive approach, uh, in my instance or in my experience, has, sh has proven to me that attorneys respond well to that. They seem to let their guard down a little bit more with me and um, you know, be exposed. In trial, you have to be in touch with your insecurities, and if you're not willing to share your concerns as an attorney with your team, frankly, uh, it's, it's not a good environment, you know? So, I don't know, for me, uh, I grew up luckily with two great role models, uh, both of which, you know, they both had to challenge normal gender roles. Mom ran an all women's court reporting firm, you know, in the 80s and 90s. Dad is in a field, uh, you know, court reporters, that the field was formerly dominated by males, but now it's dominated by females. Uh, so he is severely and painfully outnumbered by women all the time. And I've watched him, you know, successfully manage what at times feels like isolation and use it to his benefit. And um, it can be a value add, I guess, to use that term. I kind of hate that term, but to be done to give a diverse perspective, you know, but there are things that he can get away with saying that quite simply, I just can't, uh, whether and, and vice versa and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to learn to play to your audience and know what is and isn't effective, you know? Well, what do you, how did you, if, if you were going to look at someone out here and, and someone listens to this podcast, they say, you know what, I'm going to reach out to Katie and, and I'm, I'm female, I'm new in this industry. What are some words of advice that you could give? One thing that stands out about you, and for those who have met Katie, great. For those who have not met Katie, uh, you have to understand her, uh, her attitude and her, her, the way she carries herself. Um, and I think for you, Katie, it's a... Um, I don't know if that comes from... The fact that you have an interest in in yoga and you have an interest in in things that seem to be more calming. Uh, I'm not going to call it a, a Buddhist type mentality or a Zen type mentality, but I'm going to call it a very laid back. But you are still aware 
of the gravity of a situation that you were in, what would you give as advice for new people coming into this area, both male and female, but specifically female? What are some of the things you've got to look for? What are the, some of the things you've got to watch out for? And what are some of your words of advice to new people that may be listening to this? Well, I appreciate that, and um, those in my life that call me a spaz would probably disagree with you. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I think that one of the things you have to balance in this field is you may have a storm going on inside your brain, um, but but it is so important that on the outside you remain calm. Uh, That transcends, I mean, it, it goes throughout the whole trial team if you're not calm, and it it is uh, just a very reassuring thing. So on the surface, you you know, uh, you may, you may be thinking about a hundred things that are going on, but nobody else needs to know that. And a lot of that is just practice, you know, and, and learning that you're not going to die. Things are going to go wrong. They always do. Uh, You have a few plans in place for when they do. um, And you do the best you can. And, I think you just have to be forgiving, you know, of yourself and, and the equipment. Uh, and you have to just focus on what you can control, you know. Well, uh, that, that's and that's definitely true. I mean, focusing on what you can control. I think that's probably the biggest area where I certainly have a downfall. Uh, I have many of my colleagues that I'm aware of that have that downfall of recognizing what you can control and what you cannot control. And uh, my wife is like that. Karen is very, very quiet. Uh, She's an accountant. She's been this way since high school. So uh, very quiet, uh, very uh, laid back, um, does not... um, uh, does not show outward emotion and would be a great hot seat operator, to be honest with you. But um, that ability to maintain control, even when there's a storm going inside, that that's a that's an art form. Definitely. And, you know, a lot of that just comes with time. Uh, you know, my very first trial, uh, the computer turned off during closing arguments. It just turned off, you know. <laughs> And uh, how do you prepare for that? Well, you live through it, and and the next time you have two computers plugged in <laughs> to your switcher. Right, right. You know? So uh, while that's not probably comforting for someone to hear, uh, just knowing that we've all been there, we've all had good days and bad days, is such a key, you know, to succeeding um, and figuring out, you know, what will I do when things go wrong. Um, it's a, it's a humbling job. I mean, the number one thing you can't do is get too confident in yourself or your <laughs> experience. It's just it, you are humbled every trial. You learn something every trial, you what, know. What's your, what is your favorite part about this career? Um, on a personal level, I would say, you know, traveling throughout the state, uh, I know that you – mentioned I'm in Louisville, but I'm, I'm all over Kentucky and small towns, and it's connected me um, to this place in a way I, I didn't expect. Um, it's exposed me to small town life, you know, humans' capacity to be hospitable. It's taught me juries are unpredictable, um, but mostly I think it teaches me compassion. You know, courthouses are very sad places, um, you learn so quickly to be grateful for your circumstances and it's humanizing to kind of sit in on someone else's life. Uh, the truth is we really aren't so different from, from anyone that we see in the courtroom and I think one of the biggest problems we face is that lack of empathy and being able to think outside yourself. This job forces you to put yourself in someone else's shoes. What has been the hardest thing for you as you continue to grow Power Presentations? So now I'm going to switch over to a business role and more of a business question for you. And that is, what what has been or what continues to be a big challenge for a company like yours that is, is growing? What do you find the challenges to be? 
Well, one of the bigger challenges is staffing and training. Um, as you know, these, you know, you might have four trials set, you know, for the same week and two settle, you know, one gets bumped and one actually happens. I and have been, I've been a millionaire on paper more times than you can count. <laughs> right. I mean, if you looked at the calendar, oh man, I'm right. the busiest guy on the planet. But when you uh, look at the real calendar, uh, yeah, yeah, things right. are a little different. I, I really enjoyed your term, the, the Ted Brooks triple book. That was great. But, um, you know, so it's difficult to go, well, one, how am I going to get a tech the experience? You know, I started out on car wreck cases, you know, and in mediations and depositions. You know, I didn't start out on a, a mesothelioma case. You know, you want to get them the practice so that they can get confident and, and have that experience under their belt. Um but also you need somebody that's super flexible, you know, this job, there's a lot of traveling, there's, uh, you know, a lot of preparing, a lot of late nights, a lot of weekend work. Uh, so you've got to be super flexible, um, and having to deal with all of the different personalities, whether that be the bailiff or the judge or the attorneys or the client, uh, or the client's family, you, who you spend a lot of time with in a war room, you know, it's, there's just, um, on top of knowing the software and knowing, you know, the ins and outs, uh, and the hardware, you, you have to have the right personality. So changing that, I'm going to flip the question just a little bit and say, what is the most rewarding part of this job for you? you for just a second. I, I, what I said was, um, what is the most rewarding part of this job for you? Um, it is very, very rewarding when you have a verdict uh, come back in the favor of your client. Um, one thing you have to let go of, though, is the fact that so many, even if it goes to trial, you may not get to that point. And it is hard to not be attached personally, you know, it may settle mid-trial, it may settle during closing, um, and you have to accept the fact that the work is, is, uh, the work is great because of the work, period. You know, it's, the result is what it's meant to be, and whether you feel like that was justice or not isn't for you to decide, it's for the, for the parties to decide. So, um, but, but when you get that verdict read back, uh, there's really no greater feeling in the world, you know, than knowing you've helped somebody out and uh, that you were a part of that team. I don't want to. I don't want to steal your thunder, but somebody asked me the same question the other day, and I thought, you know, I, I, I'll answer it. And I had a way to answer it, but now that I'm actually sitting at my computer, I'll tell you what. When I started in this business, the very first uh, piece of business uh, that I that I did was in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, it was a mediation on a case where a gentleman had been forced into the median on Interstate 40 by an 18-wheeler. Uh, his car flipped. Uh, he was a, uh, a well-known athlete. And uh, he, he ended up as a C4 quadriplegic. And so one of my very first, I mean very first assignments in this business was to do the presentation for his mediation. And this happened uh, in late, in, 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 it was probably early 1999. Um, I got an email on January the 23rd, 2016, so that's going to be 17 years later, wow. from the, uh, the client. Uh, his name was uh, DW, let's just call him that, and uh, he sent an email to myself and to the lawyer that said, Happy New Year to you, Bobby, and you, Rob. All is well here, and I hope the same is true with you all. We think about you all the time. And Carol said she is ready for you guys both at some point to come visit. I learned a lot from you and others who worked on my case, and for that I'm very grateful for the professionalism and the personal relationship. You are both very special and near and dear to us. I would trust in you guys and anything you say. Uh, the lawyer from Knoxville, since you were looking for his name before, his name was X. Take care and God bless you and yours. Pictures of our house are attached. Wow. Wow. That's yeah, why. That's, that's why that's I do powerful. it. That's that's why I do it. And yeah. uh, of course, you know, I, I sent a reply uh, telling him that you know uh, it was his case that that launched uh, my career. 
And so if you want to know the, the, the rewarding part of this job for me, it's that. Uh, I've said before, on uh, whether it be on the podcast or whether yeah, it be incredible. speaking, wh- whether it be on the podcast or speaking, I've said before that no matter uh, how much money you make, that money gets spent. Uh, no matter, uh, you know, whether you buy a souvenir in a city, that, that collects dust. But the thank you that you get from someone who is genuinely appreciative from what you did, no matter how large or small a part you played, that never goes away. And, and that's truly why I do what I do. And I hope that people really feel that same way. And I get the sense, Katie, that just with your attitude and the way you work and having spent a couple days with you and the others that were in the seminar, I think deep down inside, that's truly why you do this as well. It's more of a calling than a career. Yeah, you know, um, you know, originally I thought that, and my master's, you know, I wanted to do nonprofit management. And, um, you know, it's been interesting because I probably, if you had asked me 10 years ago, would I feel like I'm making a direct impact on other people's lives doing this? I, I don't know if I would have believed you back then. Um, but you do get those thank yous. And even if you don't get the thank you, you know you have done your best and given them their best shot. Um, and there's something satisfying in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, I appreciate you uh, having come to the, to the seminar and I appreciate you uh, having taken that time to invest in yourself and in your company. Uh, I certainly hope that uh, uh, Ted and, and Jason and I and, and Sue Ann and Rick were able to uh, instill something. One thing I said about the seminar was if one person came away with something that they could implement into their own business and it helped to make them successful, then my work was all worthwhile and i feel like uh, i feel like that happened if not with you definitely with a few others and um you know i thank you for your dedication to the industry uh you're actually a uh, seasoned well beyond your years because you've been in this game for a long time you've grown up around the game and you understand it and uh, that is certainly uh, hard to find as well. So if everybody out there, and thank you, and also, you know, thank you very much, Katie, for being on the show. Let me sure tell you that. I'm glad you were on. Um, so, you know, the listeners, here's the deal. Um, people like Katie are not a dime a dozen. And people who are really good at this job and good at this career are not readily available because, you know, the one thing that a lot of people try to figure out is, uh, and you heard Katie mention it, was the staffing issue of how do I have the right person for the job? Because, you know, you want someone to take care of your client like you. You want someone to be able to take care of your client and give your client the same level of commitment, dedication, and satisfaction that you do, and you want the job quality to be good. And a lot of times it's hard to find somebody that's going to take care of your client. And so people like Katie in the industry are are very hard to find. Um, You can certainly uh, look her up. She's on Twitter. Uh, You can find her by Googling Power Presentations Louisville, Katie Coulter. Her last name spelled C-O-U-L-T-E-R. And she is certainly easy to find and is certainly willing to uh, have have a conversation with you or have a chat and come up with ways to do things better or ways to make things work so i'll close with saying that once again i am i i apologize for not having uh a podcast drop since the last one as i said on the last one richard katz was going to be my next guest rich has been incredibly busy i will say coming up we are going to have rich katz we're going to have Derek miller uh, we're going to bring the guys at On Q on again because I need to have a conversation with them about some of the new things that are about to come out. There is a version uh, that is about to start. And I want to have a few more guests that came to the seminar. Um, and so uh, if there's anybody you want to hear from, remember, drop me a line at Trial Tech Cast. You can tweet me or you can email me. That's Rob, R-O-B-B, at SueAnnEngle.com. So for my guest, Katie Coulter, 
I am your host, Rob Helt, and thank you for tuning in to the Litigation Support Trial Technology Podcast, and we'll see you again soon.